In the world of travel credit cards, there are quite a few mid-tier options available with a $95 annual fee. But what does Capital One's Venture One card offer and how does it stack up? I'm Bradford of the Payne Venture of Personal Finance. And the first thing that I wanna talk about when it deals with the Venture One card has to do with its introductory offer. I think this element is what sets this card apart from a lot of other intro offers when it comes to other mid-tier credit cards. And that's because even though this card is the mid-level with what Capital One offers, it actually has the same intro offer compared to their premium offering with the Venture X card that has a $395 annual fee. So if you're watching this in the future, this offer might go up, it might go down, but as it currently stands right now at the time of filming, if you spend $4,000 the first three months after opening the card, you're gonna earn 75,000 Capital One miles. Now with a conservative valuation of one cent to one mile, even though you can probably get much more with transfer partners, that means at a minimum estimate, you're gonna be getting $750 worth of valuation by meeting that intro offer, which is gonna offset your total annual fee for almost the first decade of ownership. So I think that right there might make it worth it just for somebody to open the card, even if they end up deciding they don't like it and then close it later on, just because they're getting so much value just based on that introductory offer alone. But even though it does have a really great intro offer, I don't think that should be the only reason you get a specific credit card, even though it can definitely help you and particularly help time out your purchases if you wanna take advantage of one specific intro offer when you know you have a bunch of large purchases coming up during the year. So the next category I wanna talk about deals with the miles multipliers that this card gives you. Now the first one is gonna give you five points per dollar spent when you book car rentals and hotels directly through the Capital One Travel Portal. Now again, with that minimum valuation, this is effectively a five cents back on those specific purchases, but please know these are only available through the Capital One Travel Portal and not if you book directly with a car rental company or if you book directly through a hotel chain. But then for everything else, which I just think helps make this card a decent standalone credit card, is it's two points per dollar spent on all purchases without any sort of limits or categories you have to worry about. So again, with that minimum valuation, this is gonna be meaning that you're getting at least two cents per dollar spent on every single purchase that you make. And with only two categories you have to worry about, this card is relatively straightforward and there's not much that you actually have to keep track of. And the fact that you're getting those two points for a dollar spent regardless of the category outside of those higher ones, it does make a pretty solid all around credit card if you're looking for just a single credit card and you are very travel focused. Now, what are some of the benefits that come along with the Venture One card? Because after all, it wouldn't be a travel credit card if it didn't have some sort of benefits that make your travel experience a little bit nicer. Now, the first one available to you is you're gonna be given up to $100 annual credit that can go towards either TSA PreCheck or Global Entry. TCA PreCheck costs $78 for a five-year membership, and then Global Entry costs $100 for a five-year membership. So I don't think this is really truly fair to say that it can be used as an annual statement credit, because on the high end, if you're paying and using all of it for the Global Entry, that means you have to spread the $100 out over a five-year period, meaning you're really only getting an annual statement equivalent of $20 a year, which does go to help offset the annual fee, but it doesn't go quite as far as how it's stated on the website. Now, the next benefit that is available to you is you're going to be able to get access to booking through Capital One Travel. Now, the nice benefit with this, even though it's highly focused towards having you only use that when you book with your travel, is that it does have a lot of price tracking options to help you if you don't necessarily get the best fare, you're going to be definitely getting a better fare. And then it does have some integrated price tracking solutions where if you buy something and then within the next 24 hours, the price changes, they'll automatically refund it to you. And then if the price drops by a larger amount, anytime over the next five days, then you're gonna be able to get up to $50 credited back towards your ticket. And aside from the Capital One booking, because Capital One is also partnered with Hertz, is that you're gonna be getting the Hertz five-star membership, which is their mid-tier loyalty program, which means you're gonna be earning points a little bit faster when you book with Hertz, as well as getting the possibility of upgrades based on availability. And then the last travel-oriented benefit that comes with this card is that you're gonna get two complimentary visits per year to either the Capital One Lounge or the Plaza Premium Lounge Network. Now, while this sounds nice, it's really kind of constricted. Because on one hand, the Capital One Lounge, as of right now, there's only one that's actually open, and that's out of Dallas-Fort Worth, with the possibility of opening soon, one in Denver, and then one in Washington, Dulles. So that's really only giving you one option. So if you're flying out of DFW a lot, that might be useful to you, but if you're not going through there, the access to Capital One lounges is gonna be non-existent. And then with the Plaza Premium Lounge Partners, they have just over 100 lounges that are available to you throughout the world. But if you do most of your traveling in the United States, they only have a handful of cities that are really major hubs that you'd be flying through that you would be able to get access to anyway. So if you're not flying through those major hubs and you're not flying out of DFW, this lounge access is really basically useless. And then even though getting lounge access is nice, I wouldn't necessarily give the dollar amount that a lot of these places advertise. 
Well, they may charge you $50, $60 per person to get in. I would never pay that. But the valuation that I would tack on to getting access to this is probably $20 per person per visit because when you're traveling on a long day, you're gonna be spending money in the terminal anyway on food. So getting access to that food for free, I think is at least worth a $20 bill in your favor. And that's really it when it comes to travel benefits. But then again, you're not expecting to get a whole booklet long list of benefits available to you because again, this is just a mid-tier travel card and not one of the premium travel credit cards that is out there. So how do you actually redeem the points that you earn? So there's a couple different options available to you. The first one, and I do really like this, is that you can just book travel directly through the Capital One Travel Portal and using a one cent to one point valuation. Now you can also use your points to pay for travel that you've already booked as long as you've booked it in the last 90 days with your Capital One card. You can just go in and again, using a one cent to one point valuation, you can apply the miles that you've already earned towards travel purchases that you've already made. Now there's a bunch of other options out there that I don't really think are worth it. You can do cash statement credits, which has a terrible redemption value. You can get gift cards, you can pay through PayPal or Amazon, but I would stay away from all of those. And probably the best option when it comes to redemption is using one of the transfer partners that Capital One is partnered with. Now there's a pretty good list as you can see here. I would like to note that there are no domestic airlines that are actually partnered with Capital One. Well, this might seem like a downside at first, the options to be able to transfer points from international airline and then book a domestic flight through their partner programs is probably gonna give you a better valuation than if you just transferred it directly to domestic airline anyway. But as a word of caution, Always before you ever transfer your miles, regardless of the credit card to any sort of transfer partner, make sure you have a specific purchase in mind before you transfer those points because they're always more valuable when you have them at the Capital One or Chase or Amex before you transfer them to the transfer partner because you can't turn it back the other way. So make sure you know how you're gonna use those points with whatever partner you're planning on transferring them to in the first place before you make that decision. Now we've covered the intro offer, the miles multipliers, the benefits and the redemption options for the Capital One Venture One card. So how does this card actually stack up? It's definitely not gonna be my first choice. I do think that in some instances, for someone that likes to travel, not a ton, but they do like to do some travel and they want a simple process where they just have one single credit card, I think it can be a pretty solid standalone credit card because of the two miles per dollar spent that you get on everything. And if you like booking through the Capital One Travel Portal, you're gonna get that extra multiplier when it comes to car rentals and hotels. So I think in that element, it is nice, plus the redemption options that make it very easy to redeem for travel that you have booked with. Now, on the other hand, if you like to get access to lounges, the lounge benefits for this card are basically non-existent. you would be better off going with like the Hilton Surpass card where you're gonna get 10 visits to that priority lounge per year, again, with only $95 annual fee. But kind of the bottom line here, when it comes to the mid-tier credit cards, I think the really the one that has the best setup, although it isn't a single credit card, is to go to City, get the City Premier card for $95 a year, back it up with the City Double Cash card, which doesn't have an annual fee. And then with that combo, you're gonna get access to all the City Transfer Partners, you're gonna have a baseline redemption value of 2% back with the City Double Cash card, and then the higher redemption value based on the City Premier. And then you're gonna just be able to go and travel. You're gonna be able to earn a lot more and redeem and have just a lot better options, as well as the option to always just redeem your points back for cash and an actual one cent to one point valuation, not something that's cut in half, like with what Capital One offers. Now, while I don't think that the Capital One Venture One card does well really at all in competing in the world of mid-tier travel credit cards, Capital One does actually do a rather excellent job in the premium level of travel credit cards with their Capital One Venture X credit card, which we have a full review for right here. Thanks for watching, and from your first penny to your first million, we're here to help.